Okay, good morning. It is Wednesday the 18th of March for now. Still broadcasting from the office in London, but we will do our utmost to continue uh, doing our sessions should we even need to do this from home. Uh, one thing to give you a heads up though, the plan is that we will be moving these regular morning briefings offline into a private room. So stay posted for more details on that, but we still will be publishing regularly content uh, in a much more shorter form on our YouTube channel. Uh, so please do uh, leave us some comments, uh, any ideas on, on, on things that you'd like to see, do let us know. Uh, but before I begin, obviously every day it almost feels like this the situation is becoming ever more real for, uh, I'm sure you're the same, people you talk to, friends and family. So uh, obviously I'll try to be as, as sensitive on the issue as I can, but it's still the biggest dominating thing. There's nothing else really to talk about but uh, the overall growing threat of a global and potentially severe recession that we're facing now on the back of the reality of what this is going to mean economically as it's going to most likely get worse before it gets better. And in terms of what's happening now, as you can see from the headlines to the side of me, is a number of coordinated, pretty unprecedented, really since war times, amount of government uh, spending that's going to have to take place in order to offset and try and get ahead of this impending downturn uh, that's going to face every nation on the planet, pretty much. And uh, this was the main one coming out of the US last night. I'm sure you probably would have seen. Uh, and just yeah, the close on Wall Street, we were up over a thousand points on the Dow. Uh, the Trump administration discussing a plan that basically amounts to about $1.2 trillion in spending, including direct payments to US American consumers of a thousand bucks within the next two weeks that they were saying. However, I will put a caveat on that in a second. Uh, the administration had been discussing a total aid package of about 800 billion, but latter discussions then that number went up to that north of a trillion dollar level. Although this isn't yet concrete, ironclad confirmed at this point. Uh, to give you an idea, Congress back in 2009, uh, this was in the immediate aftermath of the collapse of markets during the global financial crisis. To combat that, they did also um, take this step of sending out these kind of stimulus checks. But to give you a historical precedence, from the time of signing the bill to actually getting those checks issued took two months. So this idea that they can do it in two weeks, I'd say, is incredibly challenging. But here then lies the problem is that, you know, businesses most likely are going to have to take quite radical and immediate action, which means that people, again, could face unemployment within a matter of days, weeks, which comparative to the speed of which these checks are going to go out, this is then you could take this up a few notches. The same for businesses. Although, as we're going to discuss, the UK government is talking about government-backed loans. The, I, the problem here is the ability to get access and approval to those loans in time before these companies basically go out of business. Uh, and that's the worrying threat and the reason why markets most likely will continue to trade with this very uh, fragile and risk-off kind of sentiment overall. Um, I mean, at the moment, what we're looking at here is uh, a market still a little bit feeling the aftermath of that, that, those big headlines coming out of the US yesterday. Obviously, that did fire up US equities. But as we've seen with other measures on the monetary side, uh, the gains in terms of longevity, particularly short-lived, US stock futures already limit down. However, on that point, I would just um, say that the limit down nature of US equities, um, I know this is, let me just make this a bit bigger. Um, US stocks have gone limit down every session for the last five sessions. I should say limit down. I should say they've gone limit level one, whether up or down, every session. So it's becoming less and less kind of a real shock and awe type thing now. This is just a regular way of which the, the current market is, is performing at the moment. Um, another interesting th statistic you might see me share on Twitter, and I'm not saying that this is going to happen today, but it is a quite an interesting observation that I saw. Uh, and it was the fact that the S&P 500 has started each day moving in the opposite direction from the previous day's late day move every day for the last two weeks. 
Uh, and so what this data would basically suggest that given we ramped up into the close on the fiscal package, we're going to sell off the following day. Uh, and we are seeing that already in the case of the futures. But then if we tank today, and particularly in the last half an hour, that means we rally sharply tomorrow, is, is essentially what the data is telling you over every session of the last two weeks when we're looking at the S&P 500 uh, over those time frames. Um, elsewhere, just jumping back to this idea of, of stimulus, um, wrapping up the US, individual taxpayers um, may be getting a deadline extension on paying their tax up to $1 million. Corporations might get um, tax deferrals up to $10 million. Uh, over in the UK, um, we had the Chancellor come out. So after issuing the budget, which had its own kind of coronavirus-related uh, emergency package, that's been added to, basically. And let me just run you through some of the details. Uh, ministers are promising to help with mortgage payments, support for airlines, shops, the hospitality industry, £350 billion of government back loans, grants and tax cuts for struggling companies. That does equate to about 15% of GDP. So prior to the Trump coming out and, and kind of pledging this trillion dollar package, the UK one actually was the biggest pretty much seen in the world as a proportion of the country's GDP. You know, the UK government uh, has done pretty much more than anyone in terms of the amount of money that they're willing to spend uh, to offset this downturn. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, it, it did talk about things like a three-month mortgage payment holiday for borrowers, but that would be, again, contingent on affected um, or those most affected by the virus. And again, this is where it's about how quickly can the government really convey the details and also unleash this promised cash, which is going to be the real crucial point on how severe this economic recession could be. Um, the fear being then that it's not quick enough and that will amplify the fallout and it's almost a vicious cycle where the, the more people then unable to do that, more business shut, the more unemployment there is and then that spills out uh, and starts to manifest itself. Uh, the Bank of England have said it will set up a lending um, facility for affected businesses. We've had overnight the Federal Reserve have done the same thing. So adding to the emergency slash the rates to zero, the 700 billion QE, the Fed have come out and talked about opening an emergency lending program for the primary dealers. Again, remember what I was talking about yesterday, trying to avert a financial crisis in the sense of all banks having a lack of liquidity, which would then put at risk, a systemic risk to the system, which could make this almost a catastrophic event, not just an economic um, one of significance. So. Here, primary dealer credit facilities, they'll offer overnight and term funding with maturities of up to 90 days. Uh, that facility will run for at least six months. Uh, you know, and with all of this that I'm saying, what I would say is that, um, as you can see, this situation is evolving day by day and governments are having to provide more information and more firepower, same with central banks every day. I would expect that to continue. Now, the question I had yesterday is, well, when is the market going to hit this eventual bottom? Uh, and I'd say the defining factor, what's moving all this, of course, is the virus. So really, it's about now that the, you know, there's, there's lots of different simulated kind of um, number modeling that they've done with the breakouts in various different geographic regions of, the, of COVID-19. And, and basically, it's the trajectory of these, these cases uh, as we've seen in, in places like Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, China, generally starting to level off. And I think really it's about this exponential growth of the disease or the, the pathogen at the moment, which in the UK is, is growing rapidly. It's in that early phase of basically doubling every 24 hours. It's when that starts to shallow as a trajectory, I think, when markets might start to see uh, a little bit of reassurance at least that we're getting towards some idea of close to the peak uh, the problem is at the moment we're right in the darkest part of the moment which is the the complete uncertainty uh, and that then feeds the uh, the rationale of the consumer of that become fearful and stockpile and that again makes the whole situation somewhat worse so yeah in terms of that that telling point of when is it going to be uh, the bottom i think if you were going to watch that sort of thing you'd need to look at then uh, the rate of growth across these other major western areas and in the interim period it's about then 
uh, the confinement measures that are taken by governments. You saw yesterday France now, unless you actually have a letter of proof showing that you need to travel basically for more um, urgent reasons, let's say, I don't know, you're a doctor or a nurse working at the hospital or something of that nature, then they have put 100,000 more police on the street. I'm not sure that was just in Paris, but then um, what that meant is that they can now fine you, they can question you, you need proof. So real uh, kind of measures taken to, to the nth degree. Uh, and again, this in itself, I'm sure in the Western world is going to throw up quite a lot of difficulties about how that is going to be uh, controlled and implemented. So yeah, unfortunately not, not good times ahead um, when, I'm, when I'm discussing this. But the other thing that's happening in markets, just to quickly go back, I mean from a Bank of England point of view, um, I do think the Bank of England are going to make an emergency announcement. I can't tell you when that's going to happen, but their next bank meeting is not until a week Thursday. And for me, that's too long. The Bank of England have got to go again. So whether that happens today, tomorrow, in the coming days, I think that we are definitely going to see QE from the Bank of England, north of 100 billion, most likely buying gilts and corporate bonds, I think is a necessity now at this point. Whether or not they cut rates, if they do, I think you're probably looking at about 15 basis points to take rates to basically 0.1%, I think would probably be uh, the most common view of what they could do. But as I say, I don't think it's a matter of if, but when, uh, and I think that they will act in the coming days. Um, the other thing, of course, which has drawn some attention yesterday, uh, and I'm going to get Sam on and he's going to have a talk uh, as well about the kind of technical levels, but uh, WTI crude, well, let's just look at the long term chart here. Uh, this is what oil looks like flirting its lowest levels in almost 17 years. Uh, yeah, you've got to go back a long, long way. And, and in fact, I was just looking on the weekly chart here. If I switch over to my screen, this is the same uh, on my, my trading terminal. Uh, and here you can see this is that key level which we were testing. This was the, uh, the big fallout that we had with the uh, oversupply, the glut in the market really came about here uh, at the end of uh, 2014, November. That was when OPEC took that decision to flood the market to squeeze the shale industry. You had the China hard landing fears and that was when we hit that 26. Well, we're right there at the moment and actually a whisker below puts us back down at these levels not seen to this kind of period here in, in basically the beginning of 2003. So once you start looking below these levels, uh, you start to see the next kind of areas, I guess, down at the March 02 lows. And then you start getting down to the, the psychological $20 level. And then below there, you've got the low that was seen literally after 9-11 um, in 2001. That would come at $16.79. Now, uh, a couple of banks have been out. Goldman's have cut their Brent forecast to 20 bucks in Q2. So they are seeing a breach of these current key levels down another few dollars. Uh, Standard Chartered is going for below 20, and that would put us back down at the 01 lows. Uh, and I find it hard to really disagree with that view. I mean, it's such a mammoth economic challenge the globe, global economy is going to face. Uh, I do feel quite bearish with oil. I guess it's just how far lower does it go. And I think once you start getting to $20 and around there, I don't think it can be discounted that we do get down to that real 16 type level uh, over the coming weeks is, is not off the table, uh, I'd say at this point. Um, that is pretty much it from my point of view. I mean, I can show you the economic calendar, but as I said, it's getting more and more to the point of really this is less and less meaningful, i.e. things like building permits, housing starts, it's just all of zero consequence, quite frankly. I mean, from an oil infantry point of view, probably worth keeping an eye on given we're at pretty precarious levels here technically. All it needs is a, a match to light the, the, the kind of logs piling up and then the flame, the spark could cause the flames in the in oil market that cause it to crash down quite violently could potentially happen um, so definitely would keep an eye out for that but all in all i would say the economic data now it really doesn't matter what we're trading now is just this kind of behavioral view monitoring of governments 
what can they do? Uh, further updates on that front is going to be key. Look out for any more emergency measures from central banks, i.e. the Bank of England, as I discussed, I think will move in the coming days. Um, and then uh, the escalation, I guess, in case if you're based in the UK, is that we start then at some point to Im implement more forcible measures like we've seen in France. Um, whether or not that happens, and you know, I'm not here to, to speculate, but um, we shall see. And if it is going to happen that way, um, you're probably going to see some various other steps happen beforehand. Schools, nurseries are still open at this point in the UK. But, you know, just reading and watching the news last night, I think political pressure is going to get so much that I'm not sure how much longer they can hold that off. And, and certainly I don't think they can hold that off up, you know, and buy enough time up to Easter. So again, uh, that's probably forthcoming uh, as well in the near future. All right, going to hand you over to Sam, backed by popular demand. So let's get him on and hear what he's got to say. But take care, guys. All the best. <coughs> yeah, guys, couldn't get rid of me uh, that easy. I don't know which market to start on. I, I've, you've got pound about to hit 120. You've got S&P limit down. You've got oil near one of the biggest levels uh, of the last few years. Let me start with oil. Um, look at oh, it's insane these moves. And I mean, where do we go if we if we close the day below there? I mean, what what's stopping twenty? What's stopping twenty? Tim, it'd be interesting to see what you think uh, about oil here. I know you've been bearish for quite some time, and you know, back back last Monday, nice little bounce from thirty. We then tried to get above that range, but yeah, that weren't happening. And then when Trump did the the travel ban overnight, well, it never looked back, did it? So uh, keep an eye on, on these levels, of course. Uh, big, big area, uh, 26 bucks as well. Let's have a, a quick look with the pivots on. Not that you know they're going to be the be all and end all today, but you can see if, for whatever reason, we could drift back up towards 28 dollars. You've got to like that as the the look of, of these sort of lows previously uh, as an area to find some resistance. 27.37, similar kind of thing with the original low that we had last Monday. So we're keeping a watch on that. Uh, what we 23, the hourly close below this this historical level below the, the 26s, low 26s, I think that could, could lead to a further push down. And as we bring in that 15 minute, you know, these are the, the type of areas, though, if we don't close below, you can get a, a strong rally higher. So, yes, have the bias that we can, you know, go one way or the other. But just remember, you know, price is, is king here and, and what will happen will happen eventually. But it doesn't have to go down if that's your bias straight away. It could, of course, have a little rally if we fail to close below, for example. So, yeah, big level. Uh, Potentially a bigger level in markets for me is, is that 120 in the pound. Let's just bring this on without those pivots on and bring this into picture. You can see we, we spiked through it, didn't we, back in, in September very, very quickly. We, we broke down and uh, spiked back up and then and rallied up to 135. <laughs> Not saying that's going to happen now, but you can see the importance of that level as well. This is going back here to, let me just hover over that. Yeah, that the post Brexit low can't quite get the month on it for for whatever reason, but it's around. Uh, I think it was sort of October time. Uh, and then if we have a look here on the weekly, just to to put them into some perspective of, you know, here where you know the futures here, you know, with this going only back to 2001, but you can just see how low that is. You know, it'd be worth bringing on the the spot market going back even further. But here you can just imagine if we can close the day below here then you know this market potentially can can fly and you know I've got certain people <coughs> in my ear telling me you know look at this trend line going from here down to there we're going to get 110 we're going to get 116 well you know you know what if we close below 120 you know what's going to stop it what is going to stop it the dollar is strong at the moment keep an eye on 120 remember what happened last time just because we got, we briefly go below doesn't mean it's going to uh, absolutely accelerate down and never come back so just be prudent be careful euro at a big level as well the 110 put this on the daily chart you can see the importance uh, of this whole area if we just draw up 110 historically not just from yesterday but going back here to november time october time last last uh, year below here when yeah you got to say dollar is king and, and we're going to look to to test those lows again which is insane uh, unfortunately my trade the um the fib 0.382, 115 handle, high from the, the 25th of June. Yeah, I mean, that was out last Friday. Uh, 
what uh, what hindsight can tell you, eh? I mean, that would have been you know, such a good trade to hold. But this is a key level. You're coming to a key level in the pound and the euro, both against the dollar here. One market that is quite interesting com combining those two is euro and the pound. It's been vertical at the moment. We are coming to a, a quite an interesting level here. This is more, you know, I want to see how we close the days and weeks up at these points, going back to September last year. And I mean, if this breaks through, then you're you know, going to get that high from the 12th of uh, August last year, which is pretty much a double top, you could say, from August 2017. Looking more intraday if it doesn't quite get up there, and it's better on the spot, but you've got quite a, a key level of support here that I'll be looking at from yesterday's lows, today's lows, and a bit of half-decent price action on the 16th. So if we can get below there, um, you know, I don't mind the idea that we can potentially drift lower uh, but then, you know, close the day above those levels, we push on and, and those August 17 and 19 levels, well, they could easily come through as well. So keeping an eye on that, I think, is, is worthwhile. The Aussie dollar uh, has been, well, that's been relentless to the downside, and that is on the low right now, drifting that chart back as far as it can go on the daily. You can see we're nowhere to be seen. Put it onto the weekly. And once that loads up, you can see now, if I drag that there, we're at, at levels, well, we just hit a level, which was the post financial crisis low there in the Aussie dollar futures so what happens below here is you know it could really again look for the daily close but it could accelerate down and then you're suddenly looking to what's this here 2003 levels same for the Kiwi under you know pressure in these markets not too long ago we're finding support where you think okay we got a bit of a rally here but again look under massive pressure the kiwi so dollar is strong at the moment let me just see where exactly that is traded on the dixie yeah broke 100 didn't it a lot long ago which is a key point did hit a bit of resistance from from yesterday evening but yeah above 100 dollar is is very strong let's have a look over at equities of course limit down today it's uh you know just looking here at the dow we haven't had two days positive in a row since the 28th of feb and then we haven't had three. I mean, going back here to the 12th of Feb. So, yeah. I mean, where we open today, we'll see what obviously happens in, in the meantime between 1.30. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not a pretty picture for equities at the moment. And, and trading them at the moment is very tricky as well. You're uh, constantly having these breaks in the market. You're having swings of, you know, 5% up and down each day minimum and the spreads are, are pretty big so you know don't feel like you have to be drawn towards this market because it's the most talked about of course currencies are now moving how equities were so there's obviously plenty of opportunity for that as well it, it, it looks like we could well open up uh, below 20,000 in the, in the Dow Jones which would be pretty insane to, to think about that just given how um, how far how recently we were at uh, at all time highs just from a, a longer term point of view you know this is when you know you've got to start thinking about well hang on is this actually an area for a longer term to to get in and you know you're you'd be unwise unwise to um i don't want that unwise to go full in full size right now but look, we are i mean if we do it to where we're training down at those lows you've, 30, you've got a 30 percent discount at the moment um for me you know this uh this area here uh was a is a point where i'll be looking to to get in longer term as a sort of a, a fading in approach looking to to hold some of these uh, positions for you know a number of years and, I, and this is one of those points where i've got marked up as this is a you know we could absolutely smash straight through fine but it doesn't bother me you know this is a longer term play to eventually you know, when this market does start to recover, you're, you're getting up towards those highs again. It's a 46% it's a move. You know, you're not going to complain too much about that. Where do I think we can go to? Well, look, that's anyone's guess, to be completely honest. I think we have to take out these December 2018 lows. That's very much the, the talk in the street. We need to do that. And then it's, you know, reassess from then on. Um, it would be heartbreaking for, for Trump, wouldn't it, if we got down to <laughs> the election low at, at uh, 2028. It's not out of the question, to be completely honest. But the other level that I've uh, got marked up is the 50% uh, push lower. Let me just get that currency. So if we were in the S&P to do a 50% move, um, which would be obviously quite insane. So, yeah, it's just a bit above there. You know, if we were to get down to those 2016 uh, lows, then, you know, that would be the main part of uh, my longer term.
point to get in. Don't think we necessarily get there though. However, have a quick look over at gold. It's you know it's a market where we're having wild pushes either way as well. Just like pretty much every single product, it's one where you've got to be. It's a condition where you've got to um, obviously identify your levels. Maybe wait for your your signal, your reg to get into that trade and and, and take it on. But be quick to get out because these markets can turn on sixpence. And you can see here, that's what it's been doing for the last couple of sessions. We have got quite a good line in the sand here, 1519.4, the highs from uh, Monday evening, Tuesday morning. And then we've broken through, found resistance there as well. So keep a watch on that. And then just having a look, you know, here, 1487.1, this is the same kind of thing that I'd be looking at. Decent area support, good price action through there. If we come down, you know, why can't we see something similar? To, to what we saw at um, at those levels to the upside, and this is how I would look at every product, and you know, identify your levels, and don't feel, don't get that FOMO, feel like you need to jump in straight away because there's going to be uh, opportunities throughout the day uh, as well. Maybe worth having a bit of a trend line on there. Comes in probably could potentially come in around the same sort of time there for for gold, which incredibly as well is you know, I mean, so high uh, at seventeen hundred to where it is now. I mean, that's. Uh, percentage wise to where we're trading you know 12 percent move those lows we hit in you know didn't quite get taken out here on the futures november levels i think we could uh, in time get another test of those uh, as well especially if the dollar is going to remain this strong as usual guys any questions please do let me know massive levels in oil pound euro and of course equities uh, as well dax just having a bit of recovery so keep an eye on on us equities if they were to get uh, a potential boost from from European stocks, but at the moment doesn't seem to be uh, the way. Hope you all have uh, a good trading day and, uh, and any questions, guys, please do uh, let us know.